we are starting off our weekend on Friday night because that's when the weekend starts. So instead of starting with breakfast, obviously we're going to be having dinner and we're going to be making some vegan chicken burgers and chips. It has been absolutely forever since we've had a, a burger. burger. Months since yeah, we've had something like this. But yeah. I'm just not usually in the mood for a burger. I don't know why. Like, it's one of your favourite things. Yeah. Well, I've got like the appetite of, of like an eight-year-old. If you ask me what I want for dinner, it's like, well, pizza. burger, pizza. Yeah, I like, I love pizza, but I just never want to make it at home because it's never as good as like the sourdough at the yeah. restaurants. Like we don't have a pizza and we don't. Yeah, have a yeah. So, anyway, anyway, anyway. We're doing anyway. a vegan chicken burger, which yes. I think if I'm gonna have a meat vegan meat burger, I want to have a vegan chicken. I prefer that to the like, what they'd be on Beyond meat, the, the, the like beef burgers. They're just a the bit like, I just would never have ordered that before being vegan. Yeah. So we're going to do a vegan chicken burger. We've got some vegan like, chicken fillet type yes, thing. Yes, the Meatless Farm Co vegan chicken. Yeah, they're really yeah. good. And then we're going to make our own batter yeah. and have them with uh, have them with a few sides. And we well, yeah, have a cosy Friday night. We're kind of doing a bit of a movie night. We've got mm -hmm. some movie snacks. We haven't decided what movie yet. No. That's always like the biggest battle when it comes to It'll movie It'll be night. probably some like comedy action film because that's Charlie's favorite genre. Like, you get tired of trying to pick the and we end up just live. watching what I want to watch. Is this maybe your tactic <laughs> when down? Yeah, so let's get on and make dinner. The first thing we did is prepared our potatoes. So we parboiled them first and then sliced them into potato wedges, seasoned them with some salt and pepper and some oil and then popped them into the oven whilst we moved on to make the vegan chicken burger. So the first thing that we had to do was make two different um, batters. We did the wet and the dry. So one was just a mixed spiced flour and then the other was um, a vegan milk based kind of egg replacement. So we dipped the vegan chicken bits into the flour mixture first, then into the vegan egg and then back again into the flour. So it's a bit of a messy process but this is what makes it super crispy and delicious and golden. We got this recipe from School Night Vegan. We followed it pretty much to the recipe, did change a couple of things but yeah it's from school night vegan so we'll leave that down in the description then you want to shallow fry it um, so it goes nice and crispy and golden and look at them ah they were honestly so good then we just plated up the burger so we did it with some nice fresh lettuce a bit of sliced tomato lots of vegan mayo and we found these really good vegan brioche buns from Sainsbury's and we had that with some shop bought pink slaw which was so good as well that was Sainsbury's again and then with our chips and delicious ketchup <laughs> get a bit of my ketchup yeah mm. So we did say we were going to watch a movie, but it's getting a bit late, so we're going to just watch a TV show on yes. iPlayer, but we've still got some movie snacks, and we're very cliche. Chocolate. And uninventive for our snacks. Here we've got some vegan chocolate from Sainsbury's. Um, it's a dark chocolate, but it's kind of more on the milky side. It's a sweeter. It's not like Smooth. a traditional dark. It's like yeah, sweeter. Yeah. Then we've done some homemade popcorn. just because it's way cheaper than buying it in the shops. So we've just gone for a sweet and salt mix on there. Yes, if you are feeling a little bit adventurous, cashew palm on mm. popcorn, it's really good as well. So cashews and nutritional yeast that was like blended together and then put on popcorn. A slightly drunken late night invention where there was like loads of cashew palm left and we were all like desperate for snacks. And you were like, we need to mix these together. <laughs> and one of our friends was like, no, 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 it's never gonna work. And then we were like, this is the most addictive thing ever. It is good. Anyway, should we watch the movie? Mm. I say movie, TV show. So we've been really enjoying having protein smoothies in the morning. We've made them in previous videos, so you'll have probably seen us making them before, but what makes this protein smoothie a little bit different to the other ones is that we are making a chocolate protein smoothie. And we're doing that by adding in some cocoa powder. And then to offset the bitterness of the cocoa powder, we're gonna be putting in some dates as well. 
The flavours in this smoothie really remind me of like childhood. It's kind of got that chocolate milk thing going on, like a milk, like a sort of chocolate milkshake, um, which I used to love growing up. And what's incredible is that you can't actually taste the protein powder at all in this drink. So it's like a little extra protein in the morning and something for your sweet tooth. So we've got our smoothies. <laughs> we tried them for a first time today with chocolate in and it's worked really well. It's made them it into has. like proper chocolate milkshakes. I think the reason why we like these drinks as smoothies for like breakfast and stuff is that it's just so easy to make. They're not necessarily the most filling thing, so sometimes we have this and something else yeah. as well. We've got some crumpets, we might have a little crumpet to go after Well, this. we did have the granola earlier. Yeah, well, anyway. exactly. So it's not to replace a meal, um, but they are filling if you add in bananas and sometimes we add in oats as well. So it's like yeah. essentially it's like having a bowl of porridge just in a nice refreshing drink. Yeah, I think it will keep me going a couple of hours. I mean, like if you think about the parts that go into it, a banana is only ever going to keep you going for so long anyway. Exactly. So it's just like it will keep you going as long as a banana will, basically. I mean, I'm a big snacker. I'm I'd much rather have like lots of different like bits of food throughout the day than just like breakfast, lunch and dinner and nothing else. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Variety having, like, is the spice of life. Exactly. Mini breakfast, second breakfast, third breakfast. You're like a hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll see you back later for lunch. We were really in the mood for a kind of picnic, snacky kind of lunch today. So we decided to make our own hummus and we used this delicious recipe from this cookbook we had and we'll link it below. It was a very simple standard hummus recipe. Um, so just your chickpeas, your tahini, olive oil, salt and pepper, lemon and garlic. But what we really loved about this recipe is that it used the aquafaba or the water from the can of chickpeas. So you're not wasting anything from the can which is really good um, and you're using a little bit less oil as well. So we zhuzhed that up in a food processor and then we just served that alongside some really nice fresh crispy crunchy vegetables. We had some olives in the fridge and some pita chips or strips and it was delicious. It was the perfect light fresh easy lunch. Also, we had loads of hummus leftovers, so that's going to be great for the rest of the weekend. So after what was quite a light lunch, the hummus and veggies, I was hungry for something a bit more filling, but I didn't want it to be super heavy. So we decided to use up some of the risotto rice that we had left in the cupboard. I love how simple risottos are to make compared to how good they taste. Our recipe is pretty easy. There's a few steps that we do to add a little extra flavour, like toasting the rice before uh, adding anything else, and adding in some nice white wine and cooking it off before you add in the stock. But you could forego these steps if you wanted it to be even simpler. Once it's finished on the hob, we serve it up and top it with shallow fried thin strips of leek. It's lovely and warming, but still fresh and zingy, everything I was looking forward to at dinner. It really hit the spot. We just had the best risotto. Yeah. I think it's my favourite risotto that we make. It's this super creamy, delicious, warming leek risotto with loads of cashews in. It's like a cashew like feast. Yeah. It's like cashews in so many different varieties. It's a cashew and leek feast. It's <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Sounds so good. It's like it is. It's honestly like so nice. Like Prey was saying, it's proper, smooth, and creamy. And then we do these like I think possibly my favourite bit is the crunchy. Crispy fried, fried crisp, the crispy, not crunchy, yeah, crispy fried yeah, meats crunchy. that go on the top. We said that this is one of those meals um, that we said that we would make when we went through our cupboards. Yeah. We'll, we'll link that video. Love Maybe a risotto. Maybe a leek risotto. We, we did a video about. We had loads of risotto up. rice, so we did make a big risotto, and yeah. I'm so glad we did because it was delicious. So good. What I love about it is that it's so easy. Like you just throw everything into a pan. And it feels kind of, it feels a bit more special. Like we've made mm. it for dinner parties before. 
But it then does. we also cook it when we just want something like really warming and cozy as well. It works for like both simple and like fancy. Yeah. Yeah. So that is it for today. We will be back tomorrow to do our breakfast, and I can promise it's going to be more interesting than today's <laughs> breakfast. We're doing a special Sunday brunch kind of thing. So yeah. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. For breakfast on Sunday, we went over to my mum's house and cooked us all some breakfast and I think this has got to be my idea of a perfect Sunday brunch. We did these delicious French toast crumpets. Um, so the first thing you want to do is make up your very simple French toast batter, um, which is made using predominantly plant milk with a bit of sugar and flour, some cinnamon and some turmeric for colour. Then you dunk your little crumpets in, make sure you get the batter on all the sides and in all the holes as well and then heat up some dairy-free butter in a pan and fry them on both sides for a few minutes until they go nice and crispy and golden. We served them with some dairy-free yoghurt, a few strawberries, some syrup and nuts but you could really pick any of your favourite toppings here. This is just what we had in at the minute and it was absolutely delicious and I think I'm going to be wanting this again next Sunday. For lunch, Freya found this recipe for a tofu salad, which is like a Japanese style salad with all sorts of lovely bits like edamame and radish and obviously some delicious tofu and lots of other bits. I really like the tofu in this, which was quite soft still, but I'm sure if you wanted it firmer you could have just left it to bake for a little bit longer in the oven. I thought the softer tofu went really well with all of the crunchier bits like the edamame and the radish and all of the salady stuff. We really love using tofu in salads, it's something that we do quite a lot, but we tend to do more Mediterranean than Japanese flavours, so it was really nice experimenting and doing something with a bit more of a subtle and fragrant flavour. Nothing was like overpowering, it was really well balanced. We also cook with miso quite a lot, but I don't often make it into a dressing. This really worked in this recipe, so we're going to be doing that a lot more. This was a really tasty new dish that's definitely going to be remembered for the next time that we're looking for a really fresh but filling salad. I have really enjoyed today's meals so far. We had some like really tasty brunchy breakfast, which was um, the, Christ, my mind always goes blank when I try and it's think of this. The French toast, French toast crumpets. I don't know why. We've done a take of this a few times and I forget every <laughs> single time. We had what the was French, that really nice thing I ate? We had the French toast crumpets for breakfast. You know what? It's because we don't eat them that often. They're like a special thing. So yeah, like, when we do French toast, we'll usually do like regular bread French toast. So doing yes. like crumpet French toasts is a bit more special. Definitely. But they were really nice. And I think it's like just on a weekend when you've got the time to do that sort of thing mm. that you can like spend a bit more time in the kitchen and make those special breakfasts. Yeah. That's we've, also what's made we've it. We've like... been a bit more experimental today with our kind of mm. recipes. Like the lunch we made was a brand new recipe. We've never made it before. We found it on the New York Times mm. website. Although we've eaten like similar things like that, like a tofu salad, or something we cook all the time. It's just really nice and bun to try other people's recipes. Obviously we do our own recipes, but we love cooking other people's recipes as well. For yeah. Inspo and like trying new things and flavors. So yeah, it's been a f like fun experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooking. It so makes far. me think like there's like a funny like stigma with like creating food content where you kind of don't want to admit that you make other people's recipes. But of course it's like being a painter, you look at other people's paintings. Yeah, or like yeah, being yeah. a musician, you listen to other people's music. Like I get so much inspiration from eating other people's recipes mm. and it's I don't know I guess it's just like you're always afraid also, that you're like stealing ideas we're not gonna sit here and pretend like we know every cuisine in the world cause no, we don't. yeah yeah so like I think especially when it's like cuisine that's not our own which is most cuisines so mm. it's like yeah you want to learn from people that know what they're talking about and things so yeah so we had that really interesting lunch what was that called it was just it was a Japanese tofu spinach edamame yes. salad 
And now we're going to have something that your brother recommends to us all the yeah, time. Yeah, well. it's something he eats a lot, and it's called lard. Lard. So the recipe we're using Larb. is um, Thai lard, but I know it's also cooked in Vietnam. It's Vietnamese cooking as well. I don't know where it came from first. We'll check that out. But it's like a mince dish, yes, isn't it? Yes, it's a mince dish. Got like um, lemongrass and stuff. We'll try and get some lemongrass. Fragrant, loads of um, herbs. It's got mint, Thai basil, coriander, lime juice, yeah. chili. And then you serve it in lettuce wraps. So we're going to be Ooh, making that. And sounds really fresh. It does sound really fresh. So yeah, I'm very excited to try another new recipe. So, cool. All right, we'll see you for dinner then. The first step for cooking the larb is to fry off some onions and garlic with lemongrass, which we didn't have, so we went with lemon zest, so that's the closest thing, and then a bit of chilli, salt and pepper. Then we added in the mince. We used this is it mince, and it was so good. I would definitely recommend it. I think it's my new favourite vegan mince. Then we left that on the hob on a low heat and made up the salad, which was cucumber, radish, lots of herbs. Then we added in the mince, some more lemon juice, some pink pickled onion, some vegan fish sauce uh, which we got in our local pan asian supermarket and then we just mix it all together it was super quick and easy and then we just spoon them into these little lettuce wraps and that was it you could definitely serve it with rice to make it a more filling meal but we enjoyed it just as it was Thanks so much for coming along with us on our weekend. We really hope that you got some inspiration and some of the recipes you think you might cook for yourself. We'll put a link to all of the recipes that we've cooked this weekend, whether they're ours or someone else's or whatever. We'll make sure that they're all linked down in the description. Yes, and let us know in the comments if you prefer the individual what I eat in a days or if you've enjoyed this kind of longer period over a weekend. Um, yeah, let us know because these aren't necessarily the easiest like weeknight meals. It's the kind of stuff that you yeah. want to cook on weekends, or at least we do. So it'd be great to know if you think the same. <laughs> Although, sorry to interrupt you. That being said, I thought the larb was going to be way more difficult to make than it was. Yeah. And I'd definitely make the larb again. Do you know for what it is? I think the reason why is it's the first time we've made it. So the first time you make anything, it always takes way longer than it says in the recipe. So you need to give it that bit of extra time. And yeah. weeknights, we make the things that we know and love. Just because they're easy, repeatable, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you, you know, know, yeah. But these, if you if you know and love lab, then this is a great recipe you well, have to try. now we know and love lab. Yes, <laughs> we know and love. Anyway, I'm getting off, I'm getting off. my pal, my pal lab. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, we really hope you had a good time watching this. And if you did, and don't forget to subscribe because we've got loads more videos coming out all the time. Yes, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye.